And so to recap and summarize then for uh, the fourth week, which has been a somewhat longer week, I went a little bit long on some of the Kiefer discussions, uh, but we began with Viennese abstraction, with Viennese actionism, rather, um, Viennese actionism, uh, and we saw there the four great Viennese artists, Otto Mühl and Günter Bruce, and then uh, Rudolf Schwarzkogler and Hermann Nietzsche. And we saw that with Viennese actionism, uh, which was in a, in a, something that went on simultaneously in Vienna with Dusseldorf and New York, that there was a dissatisfaction with the canvas, uh, even though it was inspired and derived from the action paintings of Jackson Pollock. Um, there's a dissatisfaction with the canvas and um, a movement to the human body itself as the new surface of inscription. And human beings were essentially transformed into living works of art as they are in tribal societies, oral tribal societies. And so, in a certain sense, Viennese uh, actionism is recapturing the oral tribal use of the human body as a surface of inscription to transform the body itself into a work of art, which is essentially what went on there. Um, and then we moved on, uh, or rather back to Dusseldorf with Gerhard Richter, and we looked at Gerhard Richter's creation of the Vermelung process in his photo paintings of the, of the 1960s that he was famous for, uh, in which a photograph is uh, blown up and then painted over in the Fremelung process so that it's blurred, thereby gaining ambiguity and gaining semiotic complexity in the process, but that he invented a second plane of signification with his abstract paintings. Those two planes of signification oscillate back and forth until the Fremelung process begins to be transplanted to the uh, abstract paintings when he begins to take a squeegee and blur his abstract paintings from left to right or from top to bottom, and so we're left with paintings that are essentially the scars of being. They are the scars left behind by the absence of the transcendental signifieds. And so we saw that Richter's art is essentially a deconstructionist art, an art of the crossing out of signifiers and delegitimizing them. He crosses out with his photo paintings, he crosses out the photos themselves, which themselves had been crossings out of the real. And in his abstract art with the squeegee, he's essentially crossing out his own paintings uh, in, a, in an almost very literal sense there. And so it's an art of deconstruction, of, of delegitimizing signifiers by crossing them out. And then we moved on to his uh, contemporary Anselm Kiefer, uh, who also came out of Dusseldorf. Uh, and we saw how his work is not so much concerned with uh, crossing out signifiers as with fishing out signifiers, fishing them out of the metaphysical uh, rubble heap, the rubbish pile, the midden heap, it has various terms, junkyard, midden heap, rubbish pile, scrap heap, whatever you want to call it. These are the collapsed signifiers of the metaphysical age that built Western civilization that have been delegitimized now as we've moved out of the age of colonialization. And colonialization was tied in very closely with the legitimacy of these grand meta narratives that always somehow situated the West at the center and at the top and pinnacle of being, and everyone else was apparently destined to be the servant of the West in some fundamental way. But that's all been delegitimized uh, as we moved out of the colonial period. And Kiefer is going through, at first we saw that he began as a rather provincial German artist uh, with his attic paintings concerned with uh, excavating the Nazi past and the Nordic pa mythological past that went behind that and gave birth to it. But that eventually, as he moved into the study of Kabbalah and Rosicrucianism and, and uh, Freemasonry and the works of Steiner and so forth, alchemy, Kabbalah, he began to open up into a larger spiritual cosmos and began to reinscribe and re-territorialize signifiers from the world's great esoteric traditions and to hybridize them in his paintings as a kind of updating of the great hermetic tradition. But it's a hermetic tradition that exists as a post-catastrophic, post-traumatic stress art in which there is always degeneracy and breakdown of the forms, as there was with Joseph Boyce. We saw with Joseph Boyce how the West's ability to produce forms, the actual form generating field of the West was itself damaged in the catastrophe of World War II. And I think that Kiefer as his inheritor also suffers from the same fate in a certain sense that he's working with damaged and broken forms. That's a post-traumatic stress art uh, of the first order. And then we saw with La Rabote how uh, he essentially created a three-dimensional visualization, an actual literal vision of the West's grand metaphysical scrap heap that it is leaving behind and bequeathing to future civilizations who will undoubtedly sift through the ruins of our civilization through this metaphysical scrap heap to rebuild whatever is relevant for their civilization just the same way that in the Renaissance uh, we sifted through this, the metaphysical scrap heap uh, that was bequeathed to us by the classical antiquity, the Greek and Roman scrap heap, from which works like the Laocoon in 1506 were dug up. Uh, and became the inspirations for a, a whole new phase of art that lasted from the perspectival age from about 1450 to 1860, uh, and then was consumed by the apocalypse of World War II. So a final assignment then uh, for this week uh, might be to 
Uh, compare and contrast uh, the ways in which uh, Gerhard Richter and Anselm Kiefer respond to World War II, to the, to the, the crisis uh, that has left, been left behind on the German uh, culture, how these two artists dealt with that crisis, each in their own very specific ways. And your narrative may be totally different from my narrative. In fact, I'm, I'm certain that it will be. So for this uh, thought experiment, you don't need to follow uh, my contrasts, uh, but you've seen these works of art, and so you should be able to compare and contrast them for yourself and see, uh, think of ways in which it might be interesting to uh, bounce Richter and Kiefer off of each other. They're still living artists and they're still producing new works. Uh, but it would be interesting to compare and contrast them and see the various ways that they've responded to uh, the crisis, to the West's ability uh, to produce aesthetic form. Uh, and so we'll leave it there. And uh, next we'll move into the fifth week.